I hereby call this session of the Minnesota State Canvassing Board to order. Uh, before we do anything else, I'd like to ask the members of the Canvassing Board to introduce themselves. We'll start to my left. I'm Arlene Perkiel. I'm a judge in the 1st Judicial District, and I am chambered in Dakota County. Uh, David Knudsen, 1st uh, Judicial District uh, <coughs> Court Judge, uh, chambered in Dakota County. Steve Simon, Minnesota Secretary of State. Uh, Barry Anderson, Associate Justice, Minnesota Supreme Court. Paul Thiessen, also Associate Justice on the Supreme Court. Okay, thank you very much, members. Just a reminder, we are being live streamed for the benefit of the public. And another reminder that this body, this state canvassing board, is not convened on a whim. It's not even convened as a creature of state statute. Rather, it is in the Minnesota Constitution. It is in Article 7, Section 8. So this is a process that is woven into our founding document. The next item on the agenda is approval of the proposed agenda. Uh, the member should have beforehand had a copy of a suggested agenda for this meeting. If they've had a chance to look over that, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as proposed. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Any discussion on the motion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. The motion prevails and the agenda as proposed is adopted. The next item on the now approved agenda is approval of the minutes of the November 29th, 2022 meeting of this body. Members should have in their packets a copy of the minutes of that meeting. Uh, if members have satisfactorily reviewed the minutes, I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes, the minutes as presented. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion to the motion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. The motion prevails and the minutes as presented are approved. The next item on the agenda is the presentation of the final canvas report for the recounts in Minnesota House Districts 3A and 3B. For that presentation, I'll call on the Minnesota State Elections Director, Mr. David Maeda. Mr. Maeda. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the Canvassing Board. Um, my report will be pretty brief here. Just I thought I'd start out by logistically talking about how the recount occurred last week. Um, in District 3A, there were five counties that are in that district. Um, as you can see in the report, Fort Cook, Itasca, Kuchiching, Lake, and St. Louis. Um, Cook, Itasca, and St. Louis began their, we, we designated, um, recount officials at each of the sites. Um, Cook, Itasca, and St. Louis County all began the recount on Monday. They were, uh, Cook and Itasca actually were able to complete their portion of the recount on Monday. St. Louis finished on Tuesday. And then Kuchiching began recounting ballots at their site on Tuesday, and they were able to finish it by the end of the day on Tuesday. And then Lake County began on Wednesday, and they were able to complete their recount portion of both 3A and 3B on Wednesday. Um, in District 3A, there were actually 12 challenge ballots at between the five sites. Um, if you're not aware of how recounts logistically work is each candidate can have a representative at the table where the ballots are being counted. The number of tables varied between the f five counties from two tables to eight. So the candidates could have a representative at each of the table. Um, they watch as the election judges are counting the ballots. They can challenge a decision an election judge made. If they don't believe, if the election judge gave, gave the vote to candidate A and they don't think it's a vote for candidate A, they can challenge that. A lot of times that's caused by voter intent, whereas I mentioned at the last canvassing board meeting, we have found voters are very creative in the, the, way, the way they mark ballots. So that, um, that's one of the major reasons for challenges is voter intent in, the, in a um, challenge based on who the election judges believe the vote should go to and, and the candidate challenging that decision. Um, the other major category of challenge ballots are identifying marks. Our statutes do, do not allow a voter to put a mark on the ballot that can then tie that ballot back to the individual voter. That's by far and away during the recounts I've been involved with the reason that ballots get challenged. We actually had six ballots challenged in Linden Grove Township in St. Louis, St. Louis County where there was initials on the back side, the judicial side of the ballot 
Um, same set of initials. And if you flip the ballot over, it's pretty clear to me anyways that it was an election judge that got a little overzealous and initialed both sides of the ballot. I actually did talk to the St. Louis County election or recount official and he had talked to the Linden Grove Township clerk and indeed it was an election judge. Didn't understand that they shouldn't initial the back side of the ballot. Bottom line, all 12 of the challenge ballots were withdrawn at the end of the recount. Otherwise, they would have come to you to make a final determination on them, but the candidates withdrew all challenge ballots, so we do not have any challenge ballots for you to look at today. Um, so in District 3A, the recount total for... Um, yes. Sorry for, to interrupt your presentation, but just for the record, since there might be others watching, could you say a little bit, since you talked about the mechanics, could you just say a little bit for the record about public access to these proceedings? Mr. Chair, good question. So everything in the recount is public and basically the recount works, the, the recount official brings in the sealed ballots from election night, they unseal the ballots in front of anyone in attendance from the public and then they start sorting the ballots and just uh, getting them into shape so they're all facing the same direction. Um, but every part of the process is open to the public. I did not hear how many people showed up in any of the locations. And just to clarify, Mr. Maida, when you say members of the public, that isn't limited to people who live in that particular legislative district. Anyone from anywhere in the state could attend. Mr. Chair, that is correct. Um, so again, District 3A, um, the recounted totals actually reduced each candidate's total by one vote each. So on election night, um, Roger Scraba got 10,868 votes. After the recount, he got 10,867. Rob Eklund on election night, the, the total that was certified was 10,853. And then after the recount, he received 10,852. Again, I think this is really, reflective of how accurate the voting machines are. I mean, again, the most common reason of a ballot, the total change after recount is human error and human creativity in marking ballots. So it's, it's often common to see changes from a recount from the election night total. But again, a difference of two among 20,000 ballots shows the voting equipment working very well. Um, in District 3B, their, their um, candidate, Zelez Nakar, re, um, received one more vote after the recount than she had on election night. So on election night, she had 10,812 votes. After the recount, she had 10,813 votes. Um, candidate Murphy on election night had 10,777 votes. She, um, her total after the recount was increased by three. So the recounted total is 10,780. And those were the results from the recount that we're asking you to certify. I would just stand for any questions that any of you have. Any questions of Mr. Maeda or comments from any members of the canvassing board? Okay, thanks Mr. Maeda. At this time, uh, I would entertain a motion to approve the recount canvas report. So moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the motion to approve the Canvas report? Any discussion? Okay, seeing no discussion, all in favor of the motion to approve the Canvas report signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed say no. The motion prevails and the recount Canvas report is adopted. At this point, we'll do the signing of the certification.
Thank you, members. We're almost at an end. Um, this is the time for announcements before we do an adjournment. Uh, the only, I have two announcements. Um, one is a technical one, which is the, the next scheduled meeting, emphasis on scheduled, the next scheduled meeting of this body, the State Canvassing Board, will be on March 12th, 2024, not 2023, 2024, and that will be to canvass the results of the state presidential nominating primary, which will have taken place earlier in March of 2020. Four. The second announcement and the last one that I have is just another opportunity to thank all those elections administrators, volunteers, political party representatives, and others who took part in these recounts. This is an example of elections, administrating, uh, elections administration uh, work going into extra innings, so to speak, going into overtime during what is often a hectic time of year for many doing that work. So I want to thank them for helping uh, to demonstrate once again the, the accuracy of the system. So um, I appreciate their work, as always. Are there any other announcements? I, or I do have one comment, if you don't mind, Mr. Thank Secretary. You. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I'll draw the short straw in March of 2024, but this may very well be my last regularly scheduled um, election in which I will serve as a member of the canvassing board, duties that are set out in our state constitution. I've had the privilege of serving as a member of the canvassing board under the administrations of Secretary Mary Kiffmeyer, Secretary Mark Ritchie, and Secretary Steve Simon in working with the employees, representatives of this office, including specifically B.P. Black, my law school classmate. Uh, we go back a very long way. And I just want to say how much I appreciate all the work that uh, everyone does here on a daily basis. It largely passes unnoticed, and that's maybe a good thing. Uh, and I think that the work that uh, uh, that we do uh, at these various meetings and leading up to these various meetings uh, vindicates the confidence the founders had in the process that they set out in our state constitution. I draw the short straw, maybe I'll deliver the same speech in March of 2024, but if I don't, um, I appreciate having had the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Justice Anderson. I'll just note for the record that Justice Anderson uh, will forever, for many reasons, this is only one of the reasons, be uh, part of Minnesota history. One of the reasons is elections related. He was on the canvassing board, or, uh, on a canvassing board, I should say, during the epic Franken Coleman recount. So I'm sure he has many stories to tell that he's already told, maybe some he hasn't. Great, great. But that yeah. is that is quite <laughs> significant in the history of Minnesota, and it's one of the many ways that he has made an imprint, of course. I thank all the members for their service. Any other announcements, comments of any kind? Okay, if not, then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Second. Oh, it's not been seconded. Now it's been seconded. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. All in favor of the motion to adjourn signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. The motion prevails. We are in adjournment.